Hi everybody, on this video I'll show you a simple way on how to create this basic animation of an electric orb with the tools available on Clip Studio Paint. Let's begin. First, we need to create a circle for the orb. For that we use the figure ruler and draw a circle and then fill it up with the bucket tool. To make things easy, we will animate this circle by activating keyframes for this layer and adding a keyframe on the first frame of animation. Now every change we do on the position and dimensions of the circle will be reflected on the timeline automatically. The idea is that this orb is expanding and contracting at a fast pace and electricity comes out of it rapidly. So we will change the dimension of the orb every one or two frames to keep this movement as fast as possible. And sometimes we will make variations in three or four frames to give it a little bit more of randomness. After I did that, this is how it looks. To better visualize this, I changed the color of the background and painted a gradient of the orb by clipping a layer into it. Now in another animation folder, we can start drawing the electric sparks. The geometry doesn't have to be 100% consistent, but the most important thing is the flow and rhythm of these shapes. So what we'll do is to create three frames showing very minimal and slow changes. And then I jump to the next position in which the spark will span and rip apart as it moves farther away from the orb. An extra detail that can enhance the second part of the animation are these blank frames in between to create a flashing effect. After I was done with that, this is how this part of the animation looks. But this isn't enough to create the effect we're looking for. So the next thing we need to do is create a second animation folder and do the same thing with another electric spark. For this one, on the last frames of animation, I decided to create a more solid change in geometry as it moves away from the orb to create some contrast from the more abrupt animation of the first part. But for this animation, I also use the blank in-betweens to create the same flashing effect we used before. However, um, there's something not quite right with how it looks, and that's because I drew these frames on the same position in the timeline. To create a more fluid movement, we can offset this animation folder and have the frames alternate between each other. Now it looks a lot better. Now the next thing we need to do is to create a more permanent and slow moving set of spark animations to add more contrast in regards to the other big and more abrupt animations. So for this we create an animation folder and start drawing sparks creating very small changes every few frames and only alternating when it is needed. Just like here when the orb is contracting so fast that we assume there should be a reaction from the sparks around it. And we do this over and over with a three or four frames of slow changes in geometry and we insert a transitional shape and then jump to the next position. Once we are done, we can use the bucket tool and fill all the frames to create a flat shape and change the color of the animation folder with a clipping layer. Here's how it looks until now. Another detail we can add is a glow on top of everything, but for this we need a bit of more contrast with the background, so the next thing we need to do is to change the background color to a darker shade. After that we create a layer set it up to add glow and we use the airbrush and paint with a lighter shade on top of the orb. Once we have the effect we're looking for, we can animate this glow and for that we'll activate the keyframes for this layer. Just as we did the original orb, we will change the dimensions of this layer every couple of frames, following the changes on screen to make the glow effect match the amount of sparks in the animation. And if you think the animation still looks too flat, we can take another step and add a shadow. For this, we create an animation folder on top of the orb directly, clip it and use a darker shade to create a hard shadow. We have to do this, following the changes on the orb frame by frame and trying to keep the shadow consistent. One thing that can help is to select the orb layer and use the setting area scaling with a negative value. That way we will always have a selection to paint within a margin inside of the circle as we present a rim around the shadow. And finally, once all of these frames are done, we can take the soft eraser 
and delete the bottom part of the shadow to create a soft transition between the illuminated area and the hard shadows. Now we press play and this is how our finalized animation looks. And as I always say, this can be more complex or more simple depending on your needs for your project. If you think this looks too fast, you can draw longer loops to make it look less repetitive or even shorter ones of just a few frames. It all depends on what you're looking to create, but this will give you a rough idea on how to go about it. And that's it, I hope all of you found this useful. You can find my animations on YouTube, Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.